Welcome to today's Sticky Learning Lunch with me, Nathan Simmons, Senior Leadership Coach and Trainer for MBM, Making Business Matter, the home of Sticky Learning. And we are the leadership development and soft skills provider to the grocery and manufacturing industry. The idea of these sessions is to give you 20 minutes of micro learning that's gonna help you be the best version of you in the work that you do in the moment right now while you're working from that and preparing you to return back to work in the best possible way. Today's session and the next two sessions after this, so it's going to be Friday and then Monday, is all about negotiation skills. And working in the grocery industry, there's a hell of a lot of negotiations going on. For me though, I want to start this with a bit of a question. The question I've written down here for you is what do you consider to be a negotiation? What sort of things do you think for yourself are negotiations? And I want to see what your thinking is and where your thinking is on these things. What do you think is a negotiation? Gain a positive outcome, yep. Yeah. Any interaction between two people can be, yep. Yeah. Bargaining, win-win, good, we're getting some good ideas. Always looking for the win-win situation if we can, Karen. Yeah, and we're bargaining. And it is an interaction between two people. Negotiation, persuasion and influencing are all similar. Yes, they are. And there are elements that we switch onto those things at different points in the, in the, the dynamic of the dialogue. Reaching a compromise. In some such cases, yes, Howard, it is about reaching a compromise. It's trying to work out what the best solution is for everybody at any given situation, at any given point in time. And sometimes there has to be that give and take. So what we're gonna cover through the course of, he says, let me go back to that first question. I've already got some answers. My next question for all of you is, how many hours of training have you had in negotiation skills in relation to the amount of years that you've been doing that inside your job? Nil, zero, zero. For every patient that we need to use influence, yeah, absolutely. 0 0.005, that's very precise. 1%, not enough. Good. A lot of really brutally honest responses in here. And I'm glad you're all here to learn some of these concepts. One, but absolutely, and this is the problem. So then, is there any wonder why we find negotiations difficult? Is there any, you know, is there any wonder why when we think that we need to go and negotiate some something that we may not get what we want and we feel like we may be losing? Yes or no, is this how some of us are feeling when we're thinking about that we have to go and negotiate something? Yes, emotions get in the way, absolutely. We're gonna talk about emotions, though. yes, 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 absolutely. We feel underprepared, underqualified, and under stress to go and get those things done. We get stress put on us by our managers, our leaders, or whatever, if we're going to, if we're buying or, or selling a product or whatever, or negotiating on prices, and then we feel underprepared because we don't quite know what we need to do, and then we feel underqualified because we actually haven't had the training or the support to actually make that happen in the best possible way. So the moment that says someone, someone says, oh, you need to go and negotiate, or you need to negotiate this, what sort of emotions come up for you? What sort of thoughts come up for you? I'm not sure that word is an emotion current and it wasn't an expletive. It's like, ah, I think that's kind of an outcome of an emotion that goes with this. Win, lose or walk away. So we starting to see this, this win, lose, walk away thing. So we start to feel the kind of this pulling away almost. But the good thing in what you're saying there is we're starting to break down some of the things that we need to be thinking about when we go into a negotiation. Often the biggest challenge we have when we talk about negotiation is we're concerned that it may end in conflict, that our, our needs won't be met. And actually, When you go back to the root cause of any conflict situation, it is based on the fact that either one or both parties believe that their needs are not being met. 
any and every conflict situation. So whether it's um, someone's upset and they're calling their contact center or their mobile phone provider because something's wrong with the terms and conditions, or you go all the way up to full-blown war, it's because one or both parties, whether on an individual or, or, or um, a geographical level, believe their needs are not being met. So when we think about negotiation, we feel like we might have to compromise. We feel like maybe someone has to lose out or that maybe we have to walk away. So we start to get these, these negative connotations and these emotions start to come up. So they've got a comment coming through here, depending on who it will be with, can be through a full spectrum of enthusiasm to fear, absolutely. Why? Because the other person on the other side of the table may come with some emotional biases. So when we look at things like The Apprentice and these people say, yeah, I'm in a cutthroat and I'm a shark and I'm this and that. And you think of people slamming their hands on the desks and all these sorts of things. That's not negotiation. That's just rude. When we look at the negotiation, one of the key things that breaks down any relationship or any dialogue is the emotion and mindset we have before we even get there. You have to be quick thinking on the spot. Sometimes, yes. Sometimes, yes. But the idea of this session and the next two sessions, and I've got it written down here to make sure that I'm prepared, is to give you some of the core thinking and some of that preparation that's going to help you to think a bit clearer. It's going to give you a structure and a dynamic where you can get your thoughts down on paper and go, well, what is it I need? What is it I want? What am I willing to give? What do I want to take away from this? And how am I going to make that happen? How many of you in this group right now do some really clear preparation before you go into a negotiation? Yes or no? Are you preparing yourselves before you go into a negotiation? Yes, good. Ish. Yes, but need to do more. Honest, I like it. Yes, if I'm going to where it's going to happen, not enough. So we've got a mix through responses. We, you know, we need to do more. If I know, it's, if I'm aware it's going to happen, not enough. And actually, like the, the negotiation idea we use, it's a framework. It's a way of thinking. And it gives you some structure so that even if you're not prepared, at least you can hang a couple of pegs in the right places while you're having the conversation and having to think on the spot. But what we use, and I'm going to share my screen with you, is part of what we're going to teach you over the next two days, primarily mindset today, tomorrow is going to be more about the structures and how we get into that, is what we refer to as a square dance. This is a model concept that was built by Darren, the founder of MBM. And it's just thinking about the negotiation skills and techniques and the elements that need to be incorporated into the way we work and the way that we think when we're approaching this because we don't do enough preparation. And often the preparation that we're told to do is build a PowerPoint deck, put it up on a screen, talk about it and hope they go for it. Does this sound true to some people that are uh, negotiating on prices and certain things in business? Put it on a deck, put it in front of them and get what you can. But actually if we start to use a structure and build our communication, our conversation, Okay, actually, what is it I wish to get? What is it actually I walk away? What are my walkaways? What are my gives and takes, my tradables? And what are the tools and tactics that I'm gonna to use to make that happen? So you can start thinking about the things that you've learned over however many years of business you've been doing this and make sure you're putting those tools down on paper and thinking, right, okay, what questions am I gonna ask? What approach? How am I gonna use this? How am I gonna do that? How's that gonna benefit me inside these tradables? hope this is, is useful from um, having a look at this. The idea is though that be, before we go into these conversations, we need to be preparing. Some of the key negotiations we have are job interviews. How much preparation do you do for a job interview? You are negotiating with someone else to give you a job. And we talked about sales before with Jeff Birch. Every day is a sales day. And if you're selling, there is a level of negotiation that's always happening. Sometimes, you know, it's a difference between you having tea or coffee. So you have to sell yourself the tea or the coffee. Mm, which one would I prefer to have right now? What do I want to get out of this? 
a miniature negotiation. It sounds almost ridiculous. It's true. When you're going for the job interview, you're negotiating with an individual and help them see what you're capable of, what you want to get out of this, what your wish is, now, what your tradables are, what tools and techniques are going to use to make this interview work for you in your best favor. But as we promised, or some of the people pointed out there, we simply don't get any training or enough training to help us build this the dynamic of conversation. We've already got some ideas of what's coming up for people's thinking and approaches for when they're walking into negotiations. Having a look at some of the articles that we've got on MBM for uh, negotiation, one of the front pictures there is actually of a, of a white sh great white shark. Now, we have to think about the mindset that we're approaching it. If we're walking into a negotiation with the kind of almost the spirit and energy of a great white shark, what are we going to be giving up? What sort of uh, demeanor are we going to be sharing in that audience if we're going to be you know, thinking with some sort of great white shark on a hunt? What do you think is going to be coming across? Through this part. Now, aggression, scary, aggressive, mean, and what I want will take care. Exactly. And how do you think this comes across to the other person? We start to already undermine the conversation because of our emotions that we're walking into this. I've got to be like this, and I've got to assert this, and I've got to do that, and boom. The conversation shuts down. Absolutely, is no openness. Thank you very much, Fabian. So we have to think about the energy that we're bringing. The first thing that we want to understand is positioning. Some of these concepts I may have told you about before. It's relevant again to negotiation. And it's necessary that we embed some of this thinking. The moment that you're in or you position yourself whether it's quantum, Newtonian, astrophysics, it doesn't matter. The moment that you position yourself, you have to have something in opposition to you. You have to have something to push against. So the moment I'm positioning myself, it's, it's like a, a broom resting up against a wall. There's already an opposing force which is stopping that thing from happening. So you're already creating a certain level of resistance. If I'm wrong, Oh, sorry, if I'm if I'm in a, a complaint conversation, a complaint negotiation, and I believe I'm right, what does that make you? And I know what the response is going to be to this. It's, I'm right, you're wrong, therefore the conversation or the tone of the conversation I take changes because I'm creating that opposition. The moment that I position myself, I'm creating an opposing force, an opposition, which is going to work against me or push against me. So we have to start thinking about how we position ourselves in the conversation. The second thing we have to think about is importance. And what I mean by this is how we put importance onto things. So this is when we start getting into one of the shark idea and these behaviors ideas. If I start to put more importance on something, I start to adjust my emotions and my feelings about it. If this sale, if this trade something becomes really, really important to me, now what happens to my dollar? Imagine, you know, you're, you're a salesman, and if you don't make this sale, you're going to lose your job. If you don't make this sale, you're not going to be able to feed your family. Extreme example. But what happens then is you start to ramp the importance up. What do you think happens? Open question to the audience. What do you think happens to your choice of language and the way that you approach it if your importance starts to go up and you start to increase the pressure? Two things happen. becomes forceful and demanding or desperate, exactly this. When we increase the importance and the pressure goes up, you know, regardless of what is happening behind the scenes, two things happen. We become needy or greedy. This then shifts our demeanor and the way that we're approaching things and the way that we come across. Again, imagine you're in that job interview and you've got one person that's really nervous or you know arrogant or too bullshit or whatever it is because they need the job because they're out of work at the moment. 
know, and they come across in these ways, do we give them the job even though there's some, you know, even though maybe we know they really need it? We don't because it doesn't feel good. We start to damage the relationship. So our language then changes and the way that we approach it becomes either forceful, aggressive, um, or even kind of weak and simpering in that, you know, in, in that sense. And because we just want people to be, you know, just to like us and just to give us what we need. And we just want, we don't want to be a burden. We just want to, all of these things. Condescending come through, absolutely. So it's important we understand these things. One is positioning. Positioning yourself in the negotiation as being right there wrong. I'm going to undermine them and do everything I can to undermine them. Um, but that's going to create an external pressure. The importance increases the pressure when we become needy and greedy. The third thing we need to be mindful of also when we're doing the negotiation piece before we even get into the, the strategy and tactic is our language. Language is hugely important when we're in negotiation. All negotiations start in the emotions. And that's, you know, it's whether you're, who here's got children, yes or no? Who here's got children under the age of, or still got children under the age of seven or eight years old? And who here is negotiating with their children just to get them to bed at the moment? Because I know I am. It's driving me nuts. Constantly, absolutely. But then you have to be mindful of your emotions, your position. I'm right, you're wrong. I'm 42, you're seven. It's really important you go to sleep because I've got things to be doing. I've got reruns of Breaking Bad to watch. So then suddenly become needy and greedy. But then because I'm needy and greedy, my language changes. You do this, I'm telling you, da, 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 da. But what we can do is when we start to step out of this, and if our language starts to shift, are we dropping into these places? Okay, how do I shift my language to make sure I can change my, my approach? If we're looking to be right and then wrong, we're gonna damage the situation. One of the things that we can do is find value in what the other person is saying. Rather than constantly looking for the thing that where we can dismantle their argument or take their debate apart, we look for things to find value in. So we pay attention. One of the first things we need to be doing is listening. What is it you're hearing from them? Are you hearing that they're needy and greedy? Are you hearing that they're under pressure? Are you hearing that they're trying to make you feel like you're the wrong party, which is causing your emotions to escalate? So we start listening to what they're saying and we pick out the key points. And we find value in them. And in order to find value in them, we have to learn to appreciate things. Appreciation, I don't know the original word, comes from the Greek word to appraise. So it means like a jeweler, you can appraise how, you know, the quality of the gold, you can appraise and value the, the, the workmanship that's gone into the class that's holding the diamond and the cut of the diamond. And you can see how much that's worth. It doesn't necessarily mean that you like wearing jewelry. And what I mean by this is, is you're listening, you're picking up the key points and you can say, ah, I, can re I really appreciate how that must feel. I can appreciate what that looks like. I can appreciate your point of view. Doesn't mean I agree with you. I don't have to say that. I can appreciate it from where I am. I can find value in those things. This is what I hear. You're saying, these are the concerns I'm picking up. This is your interests. This is what your boss is asking for you to get out of this situation. And I wanna help you achieve as much of that as possible within the guidelines that I've got so that we can both win out of this. So we listen, we pick up the key points, we find appreciation and, and value, and then tell them what we heard. Because what you can't do, and there's a couple of points in here that are really important, what you can't do is, I really appreciate what you're saying, but, but what? Yeah, is, is what happens to everything you said when the moment you say but what happens to everything you said before it it's completely negated 
exactly that. There is you now everything you said before doesn't matter. I appreciate what you said, but I you, obviously you don't appreciate what I'm saying. Now the, the the worst one that we often hear, and we hear it from some politicians previously as well. I'm not a racist, but because the next words that come out of your mouth are going to be racist. It doesn't matter what nationality or, or heritage you're talking about, what you're about to say is going to be derogatory to somebody. And that's not okay. So when we're talking to people, when we say, I really appreciate that, that's it. Point out what you heard, pick up what you're saying, and then tie that into what it is you're talking about and how you're helping that person. One of the key things that I teach in here about appreciation, especially in conflict management and complaint handling, one of the worst things you can say to someone is, I understand. Because truthfully, you can never understand someone else's point of view because it's their point of view. My life is different to your life. You've got children, I've got, you know, boys, girls, different ages, different pastimes, different hobbies, different geographical locations, different ways of thinking. You can never truly understand what someone else's point of view is. You can appreciate it though. So the moment you start saying things like, I appreciate or I understand, but what you're saying is you don't. And also when you say, I understand, you, you can never do that anyway. So my key points kind of in this element is listen deeply, pick up the key points, show appreciation and find merit in what it is they're sharing with you. So it then supports the rest of the conversation and the dynamic of where you want it to go to rather than trying to position yourself as right and then wrong, which is only going to break the conversation. I hope this is useful. Yeah, I've covered everything I wanted to get to, give to you today on the emotional points and, and some of the languaging around um, negotiation. What's been useful from today? If you haven't already done so, now is the time to click subscribe and stay up to date with our new training videos and great interviews. And secondly, if you want to learn more about the skills we've been talking about in this episode, click the link and take a look at the MBM virtual classrooms. They're there to help you be the best version of you in the work that you do. Until next time, see you soon.